Welcome to NYFCA TV. My name is Vince Delisio. This is my broadcast partner, League Commissioner of the National Youth and Football and Cheer Association, Jason Hirsch. We bring you every week NYFCA TV. Jason, how you doing? Excellent, Vince. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm happy that we're out of the field today. It's kind of nice to be in a new, new, new spot. It is. It's cool. But the first thing we can't give away exactly where we're at just yet because we're at the start of a show. We're going to recap the game from last week really quickly. And last week's game was we had we had a killer game of the week with uh, Southwest MP and the AZ Suns, which is our number one and number two. We'll hear more about that in the show. But man, was it some powerful, good football? It was. Coaches came out, threw down the gauntlet, particularly Coach Dom Davis made predictions in that game. And it was a hard fought battle. Unfortunately, didn't come to fruition for the Suns. This was their first loss in how many years? I think about three years since that, three, team, has been, since that team has been together. Three years. Years, three years. Now, the team that beat them was a pretty darn good team, the Stampede, coached by uh, head coach Sean Lanzarato. Yeah, they uh, again, they have a great program. It's up and coming, and uh, we're grateful to have both teams in our 8U division, making it one of the strongest divisions that we have here. I am so excited. Now, should we should we tell people where we're at? No, I think you leave a little surprise. We'll tell them later in the show, Vince. Okay, but what are we going to talk about now in this, the rest of the segment? Well, didn't you have some incredible interviews that, that happened earlier in the week? Yes, yes, yes. So we had some incredible interviews. Thank you for setting that up you and bet. teeing it up for me. So we had some <laughs> incredible interviews. Uh, we interviewed Coach Reggie Nichols from the Southwest Stampede, the defensive coordinator, probably the first guy, right, Jason? Tell us about Coach uh, Coach Reggie. Yeah, see, uh, so when, when this dream of NYFCA actually came together, uh, one of the first uh, – uh, people in the community that reached out to me was Reggie and everything that you've seen this entire season everything he, he was a big part of it he lined up a lot of people we're grateful for his support and uh, you know all everyone that's supporting us but Reggie really helped us kick us off even back in December when we started our uh, NYFCA festival that was played uh, with a number of teams as well uh, the the Tempe Town team, the Tempe Town bad boys. bad boys, the Tempe Town bad boys. Sorry, folks, it's been a long day, but uh, Tempe Town bad boys. Coach Lewis, not taking anything away from them. Great team, great program, great family support. Uh, had a chance to visit with them out at their practice, and and it was a lot of fun. We had a great time with it. You guys are going to enjoy the interviews, the conversations, the facilities. I mean, all of the above. Now. Can we talk a little bit about where we're at? All right, you go right ahead. Okay, we are in the far west valley, out literally on the foot of the White Tank Mountains, just south of there. We are at Buckeye Union High School, and, uh, and what a day. This is the first time we've been out this way, this this far west, and, and the, the facilities, Jason, did not disappoint. No, the facilities have been absolutely wonderful. The uh, AD over here has given us pretty much access to the kingdom. Um, it's just been awesome for our families uh, having access to the press box, the scoreboard, and uh, it just, uh, it's really uh, amazing how the community reaches out to help us, Vince, and creating relationships across the valleys to support our teams. So this way we have a field out in the West Valley, as well as we're working on fields in the East Valley and a whole bunch of other locations strategically as we grow in the fall and we introduce new teams to make it, you know, fun for everyone where they don't have to drive an hour across the valley all the time. Well, that being said, and, and we also had a chance to visit with, who you'll see shortly, uh, the head coach, the head football coach of the Buckeye Union Hawks, Coach Kelly Moore. Coach Moore, been doing this for a long time. He's a great guy. He is a pillar in this community. He's been coaching for a lot of decades, but he's a very youthful guy. And he came in and joined us, and he just had his knee, I think his knee replaced or something like that. I mean, he was, he was you know, literally with a walker and, and everything else, but big smile on his face. We had a chance to visit with him, showed us some of his remarkable facilities, uh, and uh, it, it's just been an incredible day. I am so excited, so happy that, that we can be out here and, and have the support of the community like we do. Oh, 100%. And we also, you also had a chance to interview Sammy and a couple other guys that uh, create our production. Um, there's so much behind the scenes, uh, literally between 8 to 12 individuals that come out here to be a part of this production uh, every every week. So Sammy's just been a rock star. I'm really happy you guys are going to get to meet him. Here's, he's the voice that you guys uh, that you guys hear outside of my man Vince here. But uh, sun's setting here. I mean, it's just beautiful weather. Spring football in Arizona is just awesome. Okay, so a lot of things coming up on the show. So let's tee this off. Uh, let's talk about what's coming up next. We've got conversations with 
We got we got Reggie and the Tepe Bab. Coach Reggie. Yep. Yep. Coach Lewis. Coach uh, we're going to meet both of them. Then that will lead us into the game of the week, the NYFCA TV game of the week, which is Town Bad Boys. Yes. And Southwest Stampede. Yes. Okay. Then uh, at halftime we have. It's, it's showtime. Show okay, the, that Man, the yes, we, we, we get back into the studio. Yeah, we do, so and long. and so that'll be our highlight segment of all the other games that have been going on today, uh, and then we'll visit with Coach Kelly Moore. Uh, then we're going to visit with our crew, Sammy Rivera, who's a broadcaster for us. Uh, Colin, St Steph, Steffi, Steffi, Steffi. Yes, he's the camera guy. We call him Polaroid. And then, uh, and then we've got Tony, uh, who is our sideline reporter. Tony is a student at Canyon View High School, and he was our sideline reporter this week. So you're going to meet all of them. We'll be back after the break here on NYFCA TV. Welcome back, guys. So I, I am. We are here at Buckeye High School, as we said in our intro, and you're getting an inside, unique perspective into production. Uh, this is the production booth. So welcome to the production booth, Tony. I'm going to ask you to kind of pan a little bit, but as I do, I want to also introduce somebody very special to our production team. So first of all, let's look at a few things. We've got a sound mixer. We've got our, our main laptop computer. We've got our monitor that monitors our cameras, as well as our video switcher, all of our headsets. We had lunch a little while ago. And, and other production equipment as well that's in storage right now that we're going to break out for our game. So with that being said, I am joined by fellow broadcaster Sammy Rivera. Sammy, how you doing? I'm doing well, Vince. Thank you. All right. So you're here. You're spending the day out here. We've, we've got the calm before the storm. We had a game this morning that we streamed. We did a little bit of a, a broadcast commentary on that game. Now we're getting ready for Wave 2. We've got two more games. We've got our NYFCA TV Game of the Week, uh, which is going to be Stampede and uh, Tempe Bad Boys. And, um, and and that's, that's going to be a big 8U matchup. That'll be coming up here in the next hour, hour and a half, uh, but I wanted everybody to get to know you a little bit. So first of all, you're a student, uh, you're, a, you're an aspiring broadcaster, an aspiring producer. Talk a little bit about your, your background. Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm from the Valley, from Glendale, Arizona. Um, grew up Sun Devil fan. Uh, my family, you know, I'm about a third generation Sun Devil. Um, so there was kind of no question about where I'd go to school. Uh, as you said, student in the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, um, and I just love it. Um, all, doing, you know, behind the scenes with all the sports and stuff, this is exactly, as a former athlete, this is, this is exactly what I wanted to get into. Well, you're also a coach, so talk a little bit about your coaching. Yeah, so I'm the head coach of the girls' basketball team over at North Point Prep. Um, this will be my first season next year as the head coach. I was actually promoted at the end of last season as head coach. Awesome. And yeah, I'm just really excited, really excited for this summer to get out and, and work with the girls and get better. So we're doing a lot of things. And, and obviously this is different for you because you're used to interviewing people and now you're on the, you know, we're getting to know you. So, you know, maybe it might make you a little nervous here being asked questions, but um, what drew you into broadcasting and production? Um, really, like I said, just being a, a former athlete, just wanting to stay involved specifically with sports, but also on the, on the other side of that, um, I've just really kind of always enjoyed the technical aspects of things, uh, working behind the scenes with the audio board and with the switcher and things like that. Um, and 
it wasn't something that I always knew, but once I started taking the classes in the journalism school and, and found this stuff, I just, you know, a newfound passion. I just, I love it. Well, you, you also serve as play-by-play voice of Saguaro High School Baseball. You do an awesome job at that. We're going to be doing some work in the fall together in football. Um, let's talk about the NYFCA, though. This has been a giant that has been awoken. I mean, it is it, it is a big deal, and, and it's getting bigger by the day. So what has been – what was your initial idea when, when I approached you about kind of helping to cover some youth football, and what has it grown to in doing this the past few weeks? Well, you know, there's a couple other youth football organizations here in the Valley, so I guess I had some a bit background of that, uh, kind of expecting that coming in, but it's been entirely different. And as you said, just every week it feels like it's growing and, and getting bigger, and uh, it's just really enjoyable to be a part of and seeing all the, the talent that these kids have. Uh, it's, it's awesome. Family support. So what have you, what's been your impression of the families being out here, you know, the coaches? What has all that been like for you? Well, and it's, you can tell it's a full family effort for all these kids. All the parents come out and they travel too. You know, we're going all across the valley to all these different high schools, and there's still a good portion of these fans showing up to support their kids. And it's, it's always nice seeing the fans back out here, especially after the year that we just had. Kind of neat being out at Buckeye High School. I mean, this is an amazing stadium, and you think, you know, Buckeye being on the outskirts of the far west valley, you know, not far just south of the White Tank Mountains, I mean, but but it's a it's a, a turf field. It's an old stadium, and the town of Buckeye just celebrated its 100th anniversary this past year, and we're going to be joined by Coach Kelly Moore in a little while, who's the head football coach of, of the Buckeye High School varsity football team, but but for for a school that's that's steeped in tradition you've got a lot of modern amenities and let's start with this press box yeah it feels like we're in luxury here just being in this press box with the ac and everything but you know they have accommodated us well out here at, at buckeye union high school and it's it's been a privilege to be here all afternoon Awesome. Okay, so going to have a great day. We're going to have a great game. We're, we're calling some fun games today. Uh, we'll be joined by Matt Venezia, who will be j- doing play-by-play later. You'll be doing color for that game. Uh, and so it, it's good stuff. We've got a couple other people that we want to talk to here. And, uh, Sammy, thanks so much for your time. We've got a lot of moving parts to this NYFCA deal, and, and a couple of those moving parts. Staff is our most precious resource. We've got a lot of, of money invested in equipment, but we've got a lot invested in staff and staff is very important to us and one person that that is a behind the scenes guy literally behind the scenes because he stands behind a camera all all game long all day long is our our photographer at nyfca his name is colin steffi colin how you doing i'm good i'm good first game down (laughs) colin i have a question for you why does it why do every why does everybody call you polaroid because of my camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, your hat. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So anyway, they do call you Polaroid. And, and somebody called you that. Now you were wearing the hat, and I couldn't yeah. quite understand. And then I looked, and I was like, okay, makes sense. Colin, so you spend a lot of time on these fields. I mean, particularly in this heat. How do you handle it? Long sleeves and long short, uh, long shorts. Okay. So, All right. That's the only way to go. You just got to beat the heat. So let's talk about your passion with photography. How did you get involved? How long have you been doing it? I've been doing this for about seven years now. Um, football was never actually in the option. Sports were never, I never wanted to do sports, but it started it all with my nephew and they decided, hey, come out to a game. And that flame was lit right there. I didn't do anything else but football games. Talk about your equipment. So what do you use? So I use a Canon R, which is a mirrorless camera, which is a lot lighter than one of the ones that we have mirrors in. Um, I actually have a dual pack, if you see me walking around outside, one that I can do up close and then one I can do far away. Um, Because you don't see me moving that much, but those shots are right up close. Now, when you take these shots, you know, you're holding the, the, the shutter down and it is just do, 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 do. I mean, how many frames per second can you shoot? I can shoot about 20 frames per second right now. That's a lot. That is a lot, yeah. So, on average, how many photos would you estimate that you take over the course of one game? Uh, 3,572. Almost 3,600 photos in one game. So, you figure if we're working three, four games a day, that's like... A lot, uh, you know, 14, 15,000 photos. I fill about um, a 10 gig memory card. Yeah. That's, that sounds like per it's game. a lot. Yeah, per game. That's a lot. Okay, so um, 
if somebody wants to view your work and maybe buy some of, you know, download pictures and buy them from it, how do they do that? They're all available over at LuckyMonsterCreation.com. Um, um, you just go over to the little three bars and you click on football and there you are. All of our NYFCA games are right there. If anybody just wants to get in touch with you in general, it, they go to LuckyMonsterCreation.com, and then there's a contact form in there, and they can reach you to do any type of events. What haven't you shot? My own family pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's really the only thing. Um, I want to do more sports. So football, baseball, soccer, I want to do hockey so bad. So, But it's a hard one to get into. you got to be right behind that glass. Colin Steffi, uh, official photographer of NYFCA. Find him at LuckyMonsterCreation.com, or you'll just see him roaming the sidelines at our games. Now that you can put a face with the name, this is Colin. They also call him Polaroid, the hat. So, Colin, thanks so much. It was great talking to you, sitting down with you, chatting with you. Thousands of athletic teams depend on adrenaline fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Their goal is twofold. First, to equip athletic teams to meet those goals by raising more money and less time and providing the very best technology through their digital platform. Their job is to take the fundraising off the coach's plate and guide them through steps that are proven to get results every time. How easy? There are teams raising over $50,000 in just an hour. It starts with one call to Adrenaline, 602-999-1845 or AdrenalineFundraising.com. Mesa, but we are featuring this week as one of the teams of the week, the Tempe Town Bad Boys. And I'm joined by defensive coach Fortune. Coach, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. So, coach, tell us a little bit about, first of all, you're, you're a team from Tempe, but you're practicing in Mesa. There's controversy there. Tell us about that. Uh, it's mainly just trying to make the distance a little bit closer for all the families because not everybody out here actually lives in Tempe. I know some people live out there in like Santan Village, so kind of the middle ground. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So, perfect. This is an interesting park. I'm going to ask uh, Coach Lewis about it here in a minute. But let, let's talk about your role on the D team. So, you work with the defense. How is that? It, it's great. I mean, I just want to get these kids better every single day. Um, a, a lot of these kids are our first-year players, so I'm just trying to teach them the basics for the most part and honestly just try to get them to love the game for what it is. What position do you enjoy working with the most on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, mainly linebackers and probably the, the defensive line there. The line. Okay, so tell us about your line. What do you got on, on the line? Are they pretty big size? I've noticed you got some decent size here with this group. Yeah, I mean, we got some decent size. It's, it's, mainly, it's mainly we got more speed. So I'm trying to get them to work with their hands more so that way they can actually utilize that speed on the field. Okay, well, Coach Fortune, pleasure to meet you. We'll see you this upcoming week. Good luck this week. Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys. We are back with Coach Larry. Coach Larry, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm great. Coach, you're the guy that I want to talk to because you're the most important guy on the staff, even more than the head coach. You are the line coach. You coach the O-line. And, and so I got to know a little bit more about the line on this team. Are they big guys? Are they a cohesive unit? Tell us about these guys. They're big. They're fast, physical. They're ready to get at it. They play together? They have. Yes, they do. Tell me about your center now. Does he have to know every position on the line, or do all your guys play multiple positions? Uh, they all play multiple positions, but it's important for the center to know where the line needs to be at at all times when they're on the ball and which way they're blocking. Okay, two things. Think, one thing that you guys do well, one thing that is, a, is an opportunity for improvement. And don't worry, the Stampede isn't going to see this until probably after the game. Uh, I feel like we uh, work as a team very well. Team tackling is very well. Some areas of improvement, I'll say holding the blocks a little bit longer. Okay, wonderful. Well, Coach, good luck this week, and uh, we look forward to seeing you Saturday. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we are joined by Coach Wes of this Tempe Town Bad Boys team. Coach Wes is what they refer to as a utility guy. He's got to know every position on the field. Coach, that sounds like a lot of pressure. How do you handle it? Um, I handle it pretty well. Um, as a player myself, um, I, I know 
offense a little bit more than defense, but um, with my love for the game, um, I look to know the total package, offense, defense, special teams. I, I look to know it all. You said something very interesting. The term, you used the term love of the game. So how important does having a love and a passion for this game go into to your work coaching these kids? Uh, it, it goes a long way because uh, without the love of the game, um, you're just out here giving direction. Um, you're not looking for an outcome. Uh, when you got the love of the game, you're able to go teach the younger ones to be able to have that outcome and understand for the love of the game that, you know, this is where or what football is all about. Okay, you said you have a son on the team. What's his name? Javon. Okay, Javon. So you also told me off camera a second ago that Javon – is is coached by you and what was your what what was your comment to that because i asked what it was like you know having having uh having uh your son as one of the players you coach um well yeah i said uh having a son out here um you always tend to t uh coach them a little bit harder than the rest um so you look for every little mistake and then you get on them a little bit harder than the other ones ouch so you take your work home with you then i do and he don't like it but that's just part of being a parent Okay. All right. Well, Coach Wes, it was a pleasure meeting you. Good luck this week against the Stampede, and uh, we'll look forward to covering the game. All right. Thank you. Now, I am joined by the head coach of this Tempe Town Bad Boys team, Coach Lewis. Coach Lewis, so many questions I have for you. How are you doing, sir? I'm pretty good. How are you, Vince? Um, all right. Great. Thank you. Okay. Had a, had a chance to chat with a few of your coaches. Great guys. Mm -hmm. Guys with kids on the team, little brothers on the team. Tell us about some of the strengths of this team uh, that, that you have right off the bat. Well, the strengths comes, uh, it starts with Isaiah Johnson, uh, not because he's my son. It's just he's the most physical, right? And everybody looks at him at a, as a captain, a leader. Um, and then it, it, it piggybacks off into Xander, who was the starting quarterback, uh, number seven. Uh, Xander has always been a leader. Um, he came from playing flag football, and he's really developed this season. Um, you know, I got a lot of young guys on this team. Uh, we're playing in an eight and under league, but I have a team full of kids that could potentially play in a seven-year division, including my son. But I'm trying to prepare them for the fall season. I'm using this season as a developmental season, and that's why we're going through. Um, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Uh, but our strengths, it starts with the toughness. Um, I'd like to say blocking definitely on key plays when it's uh, necessary. Um, and, you know, we just kind of take it from there. It's, it's the physicality of us. Coach, I, I got to tell you, I was really impressed when when we uh, we had covered one of your previous games a couple weeks back because there were a lot of teachable moments throughout the game. You kept your composure. You talked to the kids. You talked to them. Talked to them throughout the game. Kept them up. Kept it, it stayed encouraging. The parents got to be happy with that. Yeah, um, and that's something that you know I, I'm pretty sure the parents uh, as well as the kids and my coaches um, is that this season is for development, and and I want them to understand that. Um, you know, it's like a, a cliche saying but it's uh, baptized by fire basically like I'm gonna throw you in the water and let's see if you swim um, because it's gonna make you a better player make you a better uh, uh, athlete and, and competitor um, and that's what I want these kids to be able to achieve um, and so yes there are a lot of a lot of teachable moments whether it's the flags whether it's holding whether it's the physicality not making blocks not catching passes whatever it is I want to make sure I'm teaching them in the right direction to make sure that they can achieve those things as they go along in their youth football career well, there you have it, folks. Another one of the great leaders in this NYFCA organization, head coach of the Tempe Town Bad Boys, Coach Lewis. Coach, thanks so much for your time. I'm looking forward to talking to a few of your kids and uh, have a great rest of the practice. I appreciate it, Vince. Thank you so much. Now, as promised, I am joined by one of the great players on this Tempe Town Bad Boys team. This is the quarterback. His name is Xander. Alexander, but Xander for short. Xander, how you doing? Good. Awesome. So Xander, I got to ask you, what's it like being a quarterback of such an exciting team? It's fun and good. Uh, uh, okay, so tell me about your teammates. So how close are you guys out here? Really close. Okay, are they like brothers to you? Mm, kind of. <laughs> okay, all right, good. Do you know a lot of the positions on the offense to where if somebody doesn't know what to do, you could tell them as you're coming out of the huddle? Yeah. Nice. Do you know all the passing routes? Yeah. What's your favorite passing route? The ninth. Ooh, you like to air it out, huh? How far can you throw it, like 80 yards? I don't know. Oh, okay, all right. And what about running plays? Do you guys have, like, a quarterback keeper that you like to run? Yeah. Nice, okay. And what's your favorite play, just overall, your favorite play? Um, last game when we played against the Bandits, it was, like, 50 yards when Izzy ran out 50 yards. I threw it right to him. Nice, and he caught it? Yep. Awesome. Okay, so I got to ask you, 
couple more questions. First of all, who is your role model for, for you know, getting you motivated to want to put on this uniform and play football? It's really fun. Okay, and, and who is like your idol? Who is your role model that said, wow, I want to be like that guy? Patrick Mahomes. Really? Mahomes? So you're a Kansas City fan? Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you have any other role models? No. What about mom or dad? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right, see, we got that in. All right, so, Xander, it was really nice meeting you. Good luck this week against the Stampede. Going to be a great game. Hopefully all those guys block for you and uh, and keep the back of your jersey clean. Thank you. All right. So, before I lose control of my back here, I'm going to talk a little bit to Izzy. Izzy is a, is is one of the studs on this Tempe Town Bad Boys team. Izzy, how you doing? Good. What position do you play? Uh, wide receiver and running back. Wow, you play both. And you're you're like a thick kid. How old are you? Eight. Man, you look like you're like 23. Almost? Not quite? No. Okay, got it. All right, so tell me a little bit about, about playing on this team uh, with these guys. Playing with this team, it's good, just uh, it's a little off. It's a little off sometimes in practice. Things aren't, aren't always right, but by the time game time comes around, you guys get it right, don't you? A little. Okay, good. And now, I, I know that obviously you play for your dad, Coach Lewis, who's the head coach. What's it like playing for your dad? Is it pretty intense? Yes. It is. Okay, because he wants things right, doesn't he? Yes. Does he treat every kid the same? Uh, yeah. Pretty much? Okay, good. That's a good answer, by the way. We didn't even rehearse that. All right, so, uh, Izzy, I, I got to ask you one more question. Who's your idol? Idol? Yeah, yeah. Who? What's the player, like the NFL player that you look up to the most? Is there one NFL guy that, that uh, you like a lot? Randy Moss. Randy Moss. Wow, you talk about history, NFL history. And you run so hard, you're running out of your shoes because one of your shoes is untied right now. You better take care of that before you go back to practice. Izzy, it's really good meeting you. Good luck this week. Okay. Thousands of athletic teams depend on adrenaline fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Their goal is twofold. First, to equip athletic teams to meet those goals by raising more money in less time and providing the very best technology through their digital platform. Their job is to take the fundraising off the coach's plate and guide them through steps that are proven to get results every time. How easy? There are teams raising over $50,000 in just an hour. It starts with one call to Adrenaline, 602-999-1845 or AdrenalineFundraising.com. Hey guys, okay, so joined by Coach Reg Reggie Nick from the Southwest Stampede Youth Football Team. What's uh, going on? Coach, how you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. How you doing, bro? Oh, great, great. So this is great. So we appreciate you joining us today. Big game this week. Um, but I wanted to ask you, I wanted to rewind a little bit, a few months. And uh, you were one of the early pioneers to jump on board the NYFCA concept, if not the first coach to, to, to commit to this thing. What did you see that made you want to be a part of it? Uh, well, well, change is always good in this world, especially with the football world that's going on out here, man. And, and with him, man, we just saw that he wanted to make youth football fun again. And that's something that we're really about. You know, stadium fields, music for the kids, a schedule that makes it a lot easier for the families so they can get to all the games and everything up front and, and forward. And uh, we just like the direction that he was going. And, uh, like I said, man, it, it takes a village. It takes a village. And, and it's not just me. It wasn't just me who pioneered this thing and jumped aboard. It, it took a whole village within the Stampede organization and us reaching out to other organizations that were going to make that jump as well. So, you know, we're just excited to be here. We're excited for the future. And uh, we're trying to make youth football fun again in NIFCA. Awesome. What, what do you, and, and talking about the fun part of it, what do you enjoy most about coaching? Man, just the process, the process that goes into it each and every day, each and every practice, man, just seeing that these kids develop, getting better, you know, they're, 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 they're doing the things that you're teaching them in practice and they're showing it in the games and, and just being there, man. Like I said last time that we had this conversation, just being that, that, that mentor, that father figure for some of these kids that don't have a father figure in their lives, man, it's everything to me. So, and, and that's really why I do it. That's really why I do it. Well, and, and again, that's that's going to lead into my next question because, you know, what I want to know is of all the different levels out there, this has got to be the toughest level. I mean, <laughs> eight you, you got to teach these kids not only the fundamentals of the game, you know, teaching them the, the discipline, 
you know, and, and learning to push themselves a little harder. And also you're, you're in a sense, like a social worker, you, they're having to lean on you when times are tough. I mean, does it drain your energy? Well, well not really, not really, because that, that's kind of what my background is, is early childhood education. So I've been working with the youth my whole life and, and this is just nothing to me, man. It's something I really enjoy. Like I said, my son plays on the, on, on the younger level. And, you know, just having to, you know, coach his boys up and get him ready for this level, too, is amazing to me, man. And I just love these kids. I love these kids, bro. All right, Coach. So what about the, the strength of your defense? You, you're the oh, defensive man. coordinator of the Stampede. Talk about the strength of the defense. And, and, and in addition to that, what do you find yourself working on the most in practice? Uh, well, the strength of our defense, I would say, like I said last time, would be our linebackers and our DBs. But honestly, right now, I think our D-line has come along, come a long ways. And what we stress, man, on, on, in practice and for our defense is winning our individual matchups, whether that being, you know, being a wide receiver lined up with a corner. We want to win those individual matchups. And we, we, we stress that a lot during practices so that when it comes to game time, it's all easy, man. This is ready to go, ready to go play football. All right. And finally, how long, <laughs> coach, how long do you see yourself doing this? Cause you're a young man, but we, you know, we don't, we, we don't stay young forever. Yeah, man. It's, as long as I can, man, as long as my kid is in a great situation to where I can just step back and, and, and just be a daddy. That, that's as long as I plan on doing this, bro. The high school level, college level, wherever we can take this thing, man, that, that's how long I plan on doing this. All right. Well, Coach Reggie Nick, Southwest Stampede Defensive Coordinator. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, good luck this week. Sir, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me, bro. All right. We'll be right back after the break. Thousands of athletic teams depend on adrenaline fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Their goal is twofold. First, to equip athletic teams to meet those goals by raising more money and less time and providing the very best technology through their digital platform. Their job is to take the fundraising off the coach's plate and guide them through steps that are proven to get results every time. How easy? There are teams raising over $50,000 in just an hour. It starts with one call to Adrenaline, 602-999-1845 or AdrenalineFundraising.com. Ready to send it down to our sideline reporter, Tony, who is there with Coach Sean Lanzarato. Take it, Tony. Hello, everyone. This is Tony Acevedo reporting from the sideline, and I have with me Coach Lanzarato. So, what do you expect coming out of this game today? Uh, I just expect my team to execute on the field um, like it's been all the time. Um, we go out there and, uh, you know, some of the kids that don't normally get the playing time, we'll try to get them the playing time today so they can shine as well. What are some weaknesses or strengths do you think your team has and how can you improve um, I think a lot of uh, our strengths right now is, is our running backs. Um, you know, we're still trying to work on our O-line to get them to fire out and maintain their blocks. Um, but as far as our strengths, I mean, we have a good running game. Um, we also, I think, that separates us from different 8U teams is that we pass the ball a lot, too. Um, so I think opening it up keeps us balanced um, every game. So, Well, thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Tony Acevedo again reporting from the sideline. And I have with me Coach Lewis. So what do you expect to come out of this game today? Uh, you know, I just want my boys to perform. I want them to perform. I want them to develop. I want them to keep getting better. Obviously, just like, you know, both teams, we're competitors. We want to win. So, you know, that's the outcome, and we're looking forward to it. All right. Well, how rigorous was practice and training and able to get your players ready for today? Uh, well, I, I like to make sure my players are having fun. I mean, this is youth sports. I mean, that's what it's about. I want to make sure they're having fun. Um, I don't like to have my practices too rigorous, so to speak. But uh, we do constantly go out there and we do constantly get better. Uh, we work on small things, the details, the physicality, uh, and then hopefully that displays today. What are some improvements do you believe your team can make coming into this game and how can they improve on them? Uh, blocking. Blocking and tackling, obviously, you have those two things any team could win. Um, and hopefully, you know, we worked on those things in practice, and hopefully it displays today, and we'll just take it from there. Well, thank you for coming out and uh, talking to us, Coach Lewis. Enjoy the game. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, gentlemen. Coin here. Colored side is heads. Plain side is stamp. We'll call in the air. All right, we'll read. 
flip. Yeah, you gotta call. Yeah. You gotta call it when I flip it. Okay? Whatever that is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Heads or tails. Yeah, heads or tails. Heads. Okay. Heads. heads. It is. It is heads. You won the toss. Defer. 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 Stamp won the toss. Elected to defer to the second half. You want to receive, right? Okay. Which which way do you want to kick? That way. Step over there. Stampede over here, please. We'll receive on the north end of the end zone, or north end of the field. Gentlemen, shake hands. We'll have a good game. Have a good game, guys. Thank you very much. We are now, if you could please rise for the national anthem. Officials have blown the whistle, and now we are underway. The opening kickoff done by the Stampede. This one is going to be picked up by Isaiah Johnson, and he's brought down just across the 45 to the 47. And it'll be the Tempe Bad Boys, the youngsters out on the field today, taking the first offensive possession. And it looks like it'll be Cruz Ortiz. Ortiz is in the shotgun with a back to his right. First down coming for the bad boys and just gonna be a straight wildcat give to Ortiz. He's gonna cross the 50 and the first play from scrimmage goes for about four yards. This is Ortiz again in the shotgun. High snap, he bobbles it and now is able to retain it. Ortiz pushes and a last few shoves there will put him at the 45-yard line of the Stampede. It's a five-yard gain and sets up a third and short. From the 45 of the Stampede, and now we have a penalty. And what did you see there? I didn't, I didn't catch anything. Looked like it might be an encroachment call. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense. Cruz Ortiz gets it again. He's going to take it right up the gut. And Ortiz will pick up about four yards. 
It looks like Ortiz will get a breather. This is Isaiah Johnson who takes the Wildcat give. And Johnson plows ahead, may not have gotten much as they keep running the same play, but for the most part, it's working. This is Isaiah Johnson, who's going to go off to his right. Had a couple blocks up there, and now Johnson's going to get up to the 30-yard line right on the first down line. Three-plus minutes on this drive. Johnson remains the quarterback. And now we're going to see an encroachment penalty. We could see that one up here. Prior to the snap, encroachment on the defense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. For the Southwest Stampede, and it's cost them some yards now being pushed further and further back the field. This play didn't go for really anything. Isaiah Johnson was brought down behind the line. One of the newer teams joining the NYFCA. For the use of the experience you get from it, as that's what we heard from Coach Lewis Johnson. And you see Isaiah Johnson gain a couple there. And this will bring up a third down and about medium. High snap for Johnson. He's rolling to his right, looking for somebody. He's going to avoid it, and now fires downfield, and that pass is going to be caught at the 20-yard line. And coming down with it, Denver Gilreath. He just ran a curl route, it looked like, and Johnson, facing all kinds of pressure, was able to deliver a strike. First and 10 coming up for the bad boys. Johnson again behind center. And here we're going to get another penalty. This one's going to be a false start on the offense. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Coming back a little now. Cruz Ortiz is to the right of Johnson. He gets the snap straight up, and he's going to get brought down. Julian French had the tackle for the Stampede. Second down for the bad boys. Another penalty, and this time it's going to be an encroachment. So that false start penalty essentially gets canceled Prior to the out. snap, encroachment on the defense. Five yards. Still second down. So this time under center, that's Cruz Ortiz who pushes it up across the 20 and down near the 15. Pretty productive play there. Another wildcat run for the quarterback. Ortiz gets it. He's running out to his left and just gets swallowed up. Didn't really get a block there to help him out. And Ortiz doesn't go for anything. And that will bring down a fourth down and long. And we'll see what the bad boys will dial up here. So this is Ortiz behind center. Fourth down and long. He's going to air it out. Fires as he was hit. And that one falls incomplete. And we may see a pass interference penalty potentially. There was some contact on the throw as the ball was not able to be complete. Ineligible man downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined, result of the play, first down, stampede. So the penalty is for an illegal man downfield, so. And it looks like it, as you said, Rylan LaGreco back there ready to take the snaps. I'm excited to see this bad boy's defense. As we were saying, that offense was just kind of on a roll to start. It'd be nice to see their defense come out with that same intensity. This is LaGreco, and it's gonna be a draw giving this to Maddox Estabogo, and he's found a lane all the way across the 50. Nobody's going to touch him. Escobedo across the 20 to the 10, and the first play from scrimmage for the Stampede offense goes all the way to the house. It's a touchdown for the Stampede. Yeah, just tough. That was a nice job. He just caught the edge. Once he hit the sideline, there was no doubt about it. No one on that bad boys team was going to have a chance at him. Excuse me, that actually was Lennon Hauser, number 31. Looks like a couple blockers back there in the backfield with him. Ortiz gets it. Excuse me, this was actually Denver Gilreath, the receiver, getting the snap. And he doesn't gain much there. 
in the league. Coaches allowed to be in the backfield to just help assist the players getting set. Gilreath trying to push his way through, not going to be able to. He's brought down at his own 35-yard line. That play goes for a just about nothing. And it'll be an official loss of two, making it third down and 15 for the bad boys. Cruz Ortiz backing up, having to run in circles, stays on his feet and just fires one away. And it's going to fall incomplete. Hayden Meyer, the fourth different player we've seen back there, but prior to that, we do get a whistle. The play was stopped to make sure the players were properly equipped. Meyer waiting on it there. Looked like a hard count play. Not the best snap. Meyer now is just going to get swallowed up. The offensive line not able to provide the time, and that will be a turnover on downs. As it's currently six to nothing here at Buckeye Union High School. NYFCA play, excuse me, game of the week. Coming to you here on this Sunday afternoon, a hot one in Buckeye, Arizona. Yeah, thankfully there's just that slight breeze coming in. And for us in the booth, right, we have AC in here. It's a Nicely conditioned area. Meanwhile, down the field, the play is going to be made. Bringing it in and taking it in all the way is Carter Reed for the touchdown. So two plays, two touchdowns. Rylan LaGreco airing that one out. Single man coverage. The lead is now 12 to nothing for the Stampede. LaGreco gives it. Breaking a tackle and finding the end zone for the extra points is Eli Guerrero. Welcome back here after the Stampede touchdown, making it 13 to nothing with the extra point being converted. Eli Guerrero ran it in from about five yards. And now getting ready to kick it away is the Stampede. The Stampede rocking the orange uniforms today. And the Tempe Bad Boys in the white with black helmets. The kickoff is away over the head. That was a great kick by Isaiah Johnson, who now gets it. Johnson making a few men miss. And he's going to get brought down at about the 37. Did the football come loose? Yeah, it looks like it'll stay with the Bad Boys. But it's all about the experience from this group. and. I think we're going to see a penalty here. It looks like it will be a false start. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense. Five yards, still first down. And you may have been able to see Coach Lewis Johnson's reaction to that, not happy about the disciplinary penalties that you just can't have, especially when trailing by two possessions like they are now. Isaiah Johnson took it himself. Gets swallowed up for a couple. Second down coming up. And that one's going to be blown dead. Pretty much right as it was snapped. And we have not gotten a ruling as to why. Second down coming up for the bad boys. This is Johnson who takes it himself. Gets to the second level as he crosses the 35 and brought down at the 36. A positive play there for the bad boys. Absolutely, Sammy. And at some point or another, you got to start taking risks, but it's definitely not in the air. As you see, there's barely any time. That one's still delivered to Cruz Ortiz. Ortiz was the first quarterback we saw under center for the offense of the bad boys, but now he gets it done on the receiving side. It's a nice completion from Johnson. Fourth down and eight. Couple guys out wide for Isaiah Johnson who gets a snap. A better job of blocking. Still not much room though for Johnson. Still on his feet and now he gets brought down. Lennon Hauser, who else? 
brings him down, and that will be a turnover. The offense of the Stampede will come back out onto the field. Lennon Hauser's second sack of the day. It's Kane Lanzarato, the son of head coach Sean Lanzarato, back there. This time the give is going to be given to Jackson Johnson, who's going to go all the way again. Three plays on offense, three touchdowns for the Stampede. And they've had such good success today. Just a little give there makes it 19 to zero. Three receivers outright in an interesting formation here. Cade Lanzarato in the backfield with Rylan LaGreco, the quarterback. LaGreco rolls right. He's gonna tuck it himself and find his way into the end zone for the extra point. And that makes it 20 to nothing for the Stampede. Sometimes, you know, the experience you gain from matchups like this goes a long way. This one over the head of Ortiz. It hit his hand. So this play is still live. He gets it now at the 20. Cruz Ortiz gets piled up at the 25. Just two guys on the sideline for the bad boys. Ortiz. Mike gets swallowed up here, still on his feet. He's running backwards. That football is loose. And it may have been jumped on by the Stampede. It does. They force a turnover. As we've been alluding to a little bit, it's all about how you learn from a matchup like this. LaGreco having some confusion there, giving that football off to Jeremiah Smythe. And they're just going to rule it dead right there. So a positive play for the bad boys. Some miscommunication there on who was supposed to keep the football and who was supposed to let go of it. So just getting a bunch of different players involved in the contest. And, and that at least lets you know where you're at at that point in the season as we see this give going to be given to Julian French. French is going to be brought down as he just crosses the 10. We're gonna get a timeout by the bad boys here, their second of the Time half. Timeout, bad boys. That is their second timeout of the first half. And we're back here on the call out of the timeout from the bad boys. The Stampede looking to get back into the end zone. This give looks like Jackson Johnson who's gonna find a way to get back into the end zone. That's another touchdown. Excuse me, it looked like an eight from up here. That's actually Julian Franks who finds his way across the pylon. Another touchdown for the Stampede, making it 26 to nothing. And now a back will join him. LaGreco, he's going to hand it. Running out wide, trying to get in, and they do. That's an extra point being converted. And Tion Gardner able to do that, making it 27 to nothing. Sammy, they continue to stretch the lead with ease. Yep, and we actually do have some laundry. The result of the try is successful. After the play, personal foul on the offense. That penalty will be enforced 15 yards on the kickoff. Another booming kick that hit a hand of the bad boys, and now it's covered and picked up by Cruz Ortiz. Ortiz gets across the 50 and goes down at what looks to be the 47, maybe the 48. So Coach Lewis Johnson getting his guys set up on the offensive side. Isaiah Johnson under center in the shotgun with two backs to either side. This ball comes loose. Johnson may have gotten back on top of it. Not the best communication there of handing off the football, and we think the ball will stay with the bad boys. That receiver for the bad boys split way out. Denver Gilreath, the man, he had one catch earlier in the contest as this snap by Johnson. Ortiz down to a crouch, able to make the catch and a couple yards picked up there. Looks like the Stampede have eight players in the box here on defense. Got to believe the pressure could be coming here on Johnson. It is. He takes it himself, 
gets to the second level and leans forward trying to extend the football. Good gain there from the bad boys, but it still looks like they will be a good chunk of yards away from a first. And they'll need roughly about 10 yards, maybe nine on this opportunity here. Johnson gets a snap, fires downfield, and that's gonna be incomplete, but they did try and test it down the field. He had enough time to deliver the throw, just not really anyone in the area to come down with it. Looks like we saw Denver Gilreath out there, but the pass falls incomplete and another turnover for the bad boys. Yep, you had Denver Gilreath out there and it looked like Cruz Ortiz was leaking out of the backfield. Uh, Might have had One an minute, 42 seconds remaining in the second quarter. 142 in the second quarter. Might have had an opportunity to go out and get that, but Johnson was throwing into the wind that time and that can always play a factor into the trajectory of the throw. But that pressure for the Stampede is just, it's been all over Johnson, not giving him much time at all to get his bearings back there. So the Stampede offensively have done exactly what their name means. Just storm down the field with ease and not really anything able to stop them from doing that. Rylan LaGreco looking to punch it down the field again. Another big gain here, trying to shove his way down was Eli Guerrero. And Guerrero crosses the 50 and he's brought down at about the 48 yard line. LaGreco and his offense not in too much of a hurry. They give off to the right side, finding the sideline and nobody is gonna touch him. It will be Jeremiah Smythe crossing the end zone once again for the Stampede. It's another touchdown. And on the edge, Carter Reed, he's been all over the field for the Stampede. Got a nice block out in space and some even better moves and footwork from Jeremiah Smythe. And another touchdown here for the Stampede, starting to blow this one open. 33 to nothing is the score. Another touchdown picked up here in the first half of play. Jeremiah Smythe, the man doing it. On another one of those sweet plays it looked like. And doing it himself for roughly about 48 yards. Finding the end zone. So another extra point opportunity coming up and then the bad boys will have it for just a few seconds before we go for an intermission at the half. A direct snap gonna be taken by Lanzarato going for the extra point and I think Two guys thought the ball was going to them and a collision makes that one fall incomplete. So the score remains 33 to zero. So the kickoff underway and being brought down at around the 50 yard line are the bad boys. And the snap comes. And not much gonna be gained out of that. And the bad boys have been having some difficulty with the snap all day. And you can kind of expect that being back in shotgun at this young of an age. So the clock will continue to run, it looks like Coach Lewis Johnson will take his team off the field. And what was not a very pretty first half for the Tempe Bad Boys is all about the experience. They will, both sides will go to a quick break. This is the end of the first half. 33 nothing is the score. We have a sideline interview with head coach Lewis Johnson. And we will send it down to Tony, our sideline reporter. Tony, take it away. Hello, everyone, and welcome to your halftime entertainment. I'm Tony Acevedo reporting to you from the sideline, and today I have with me Coach Lewis once again. So, Coach, um, what are your thoughts currently on the Bad Boys' performance in the game? 
Uh, right now, I feel like we started off great. We started off excellent. One of the best starts that we had. We had three consecutive first downs. We're doing it. We're making way. Uh, but then the penalties, just like I discussed before, you know, the beginning of the game, the penalties and then the blocking, ball starts and things like that really hurt us. And I got to get these kids mentally tough um, to be able to withstand that and continue on. Do you feel that, uh, what are some things that, you, that your team can do to potentially secure the win or get it back? Uh, well, uh, the, the simple things. I mean, you know, no penalties, you know, continue blocking uh, and, and make plays. Make plays at the end of the day. That's all we need. Do you have any favorite moments from the game thus far? Uh, favorite? Uh, yeah, number four, Isaiah Johnson. You know, he rolled out looking like Cam Newton. He put his stiff arm and then he threw the ball to number one, Denver Gilreef. That, that was a good play. I like that. Well, thank you for talking to us. Uh, I hope you have the rest of the game. You enjoy the rest of the game. And good luck to your team. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's Tony Acevedo back on the sideline with Coach Lanzarado. Coach, how, what are your thoughts on the Stampede's performance currently in the game? Uh, we've played very very well to, uh, so far. I mean, we've scored on like one position on uh, each uh, each position we've had. We scored on one the first play. So um, the kids are executing, having fun. Uh, I'm just going to mix it up, try to get my linemen some of the, some of the some of the runs now. So, well, you're doing very your team's doing very excellent in this game so far. But uh, what do you think are some things your team can do potentially to to secure the win? Uh, just keep doing what we're doing. Uh, I think defensively we're we're flying to the ball, stopping them on on defense. Offensive uh, offensive reps, we're we're scoring. I mean that's the the whole point of being on offense. We got to score points, and uh, so we're doing that. So proud of the kids, proud of the proud of my old line. They're firing out, they're doing a good job. Absolutely. What are some? Uh, what, do you have any favorite moments of the game so far? Uh, the touchdown from uh, Julian French. Uh, he is our one of our linemen. So I told him he was he did he blocked his butt off uh, the first uh, last week in, versus the Suns, and uh, I told him I would reward him to try to get him a touchdown. So that was a special moment for him because the linemen they don't get that praise all the time. So uh, when you get a lineman out there to score a touchdown, it's always a good feeling. Absolutely. Hope your team keeps doing what they're doing. Good luck to you on the game. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Thousands of athletic teams depend on adrenaline fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Their goal is twofold. First, to equip athletic teams to meet those goals by raising more money in less time and providing the very best technology through their digital platform. Their job is to take the fundraising off the coach's plate and guide them through steps that are proven to get results every time. How easy? There are teams raising over $50,000 in just an hour. It starts with one call to Adrenaline, 602-999-1845 or AdrenalineFundraising.com. This is a uh, really just a tough season for the bad boys coming up and playing in a higher age group. You almost have to think of it as a, a building year rather than a year where you're trying to measure success by championships. A nice kick that was just put right up into the air and brought back to the 40-yard line. Took a second to come down. So this is LaGreco. He's going to put it on the ground and give it back to Lennon Hauser, who is going to have no one bring him down again. Lennon Hauser has his second touchdown of the game. It's been an easy day on offense for Rylan LaGreco, who's just thrown it once for a touchdown and handed it off to some very skilled backs. Another touchdown for the Stampede. The ball comes loose here, and it'll actually be picked up. Isaiah Johnson on the bad boys. So there's one of those plays that you're hoping to have happen to talk about and, and you know gather around and bring to the next contest. Isaiah Johnson recovers the fumble. And the first turnover we've seen from the Stampede on offense is picked up by the bad boys. And we're back here in the broadcast booth after the timeout of the Bad Boys who just recovered the fumble. And we'll now take it back over on offense. Clock will resume ticking now. Taking it from the 46-yard line of the Stampede are the Bad Boys who have not really been able to do much today but could be a momentum mover here with that 
fumble recovery. This is Isaiah Johnson who gets out of a scrum. Ball comes loose again. Back-to-back -back plays, back-to-back -back fumbles. It's recovered by the Stampede. And now the Stampede getting set on offense. Not the best snap. This one is still loose. And we believe the Stampede getting back on it. So some careless ball handling now that we've seen here in the late stages of this one. And that might also be a factor of rotating in some of those players who might not have gotten as, as many reps as the starters this season. And good job by number two. This 21. is the end of the third quarter. Excuse me, it was a good job by 21 Hayden Meyer hopping on that. So the clock now will begin to move. The offense of the Southwest Stampede out there now. So fourth quarter is now underway. New quarterback under center, Maddox Escobedo. Got this one up the right side, and now it'll be taken across the 35-yard line. A huge play for the Stampede. So you're looking to do one of those kind of things here that can really give yourself some momentum, not for this game necessarily, but moving forward. Exactly. These are the types of games, excuse me, as this one's handed off. This one's going to be given. Rennie Smith is going to go all the way again, untouched. Another touchdown. The Stampede pouring it on now. It is 46 to nothing. During the run, holding on the offense, number 30. So Penalty this is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. This touchdown is going to come back. A holding penalty on the Stampede. Maybe that was why found his way into the second level so easily, but that touchdown coming off the board. As the play will continue rolling out now, this is Smith again, and he's brought down by the bad boys. A nice tackle made there, Landon Flynn. So not really allowing Rennie Smith to get through like he did on the penalty that was taken back, but a good tackle there by the bad boys. Yeah, it was just a straight give there to Smith, and as you said, that bad boys defense did a much better job on that play. Six Getting minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter. This time the give will go. Ivan Gracia gets brought down pretty much at the line, and now we're going to get a penalty. Yeah, it looked like one of the bad boys' defender had a nice grasp of his face mask there as he tried to bring him down. Easy call for the official. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 55. 15-yard penalty, still second down. And that's Landon Flynn for the bad boys being called for the face mask. So this defense of the bad boys starting to make some plays, but throwing it away there with the face mask penalty. You can't have that happen. And that's really been the story, I guess, for the bad boys all game is just those penalties coming back to bite them as soon as they have a bit of momentum, whether it be on offense or on defense. Just kind of shooting themselves in the foot. So taking this drive over. At about the 25-yard line this time, a give will be given. Running it again, Ivan Gracia breaks a tackle, and now he gets brought out of bounds. A nice tackle there again by Landon Flynn, who's made two on some consecutive plays here. He's starting to play for something here more than just the score. And Ivan Gracia was able to find some space out there. Initially, it looked like the bad boys had a good push by the defensive line, and it looks like... There might be another penalty down. During the run, holding on the offense, number 15. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. 
Third down. So an offensive hold will bring this one back again. So we've seen a couple of those on the drive. Penalties from the Stampede picking up here. Third and 15 for the Stampede. Really the first time today they faced some sort of adversity as they've had it their way the entire game except for pretty much right now. A big chance here for the Bad Boys to make a stand. Not a good snap. And that play will go backwards, setting up a fourth down and forever is getting able to be toppled on. Maddox Escobedo was able to save it there, bringing up fourth and long. Again, kind of both teams actually having some trouble now with those high snaps. Bentley Robinson was also back there to help corral that. Fourth and long. They're going to run the football here and not able to go anywhere was Bentley Robinson, a big tackle behind the line by the bad boy defense. And the guys in white with their best defensive stand of the entire game here in the late stages of the contest. And a huge job done there. And now the bad boys will come on offense. Three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Three minutes in the fourth quarter. Here our head ref let you know, three minutes to go in this contest. And the Stampede, as we've said, now getting a lot of their players, some different jersey numbers we're seeing out there on the field, getting all their players some reps now late in the game. The bad boys from the 50-yard line, under three minutes now and ticking to go in this one. High snap, a direct give. Gets swallowed up for nothing, maybe even a loss of a yard. A minute and a half to go in this one. So from now, the 49-yard line. Coach Lewis Johnson just getting his guys settled. Maybe even some Gatorade in there as well in between plays here as we're now probably under a minute to go. 55 seconds and counting. Johnson gets the give. He's going to go nowhere. Another loss of a yard. Clock continues to roll. In the blowout. 46 to nothing. Maybe another play or two left in this one. Twenty ticks to go. Third down coming up for the bad boys on this possession. Meyer airing it out deep. They had a chance. It falls incomplete. Isaiah Johnson, really the only threat of the day, could have came there. Yeah. Is the end of the fourth quarter. And that will end the contest. 46 to nothing. The Stampede have it their way over the 7U Tempe Bad Boys. And 
it's all about moving forward and taking little bits of these games that don't go your way and building from them and that's what we hope will happen for this group of young men and the Tempe Bad Boys. Yeah, and really on both sides of the ball too, you know, uh, the Southwest Stampede now bringing their season record to six wins and one loss. That one loss they actually just made up for last week. They lost to the Suns earlier in the season and came back and beat them last week. But really they have just been improving every week and just getting better. So as you see the players at the 50 yard line congratulating and offering a good deal of sportsmanship and that's tough when you lose by nearly half a century mark. As you see a couple of Stampeders celebrating in a game that they dominated today in all facets of it. And it's good to see the good energy from these young bad boys Still staying positive, and one of them there taking his helmet off. 55, Landon Flynn really put together a solid game on defense. You know, at the conclusion of it, really, in that fourth quarter, he had a couple big tackles uh, to keep this game really where it is. It could have been a lot worse if it wasn't for 55 and White. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And actually, we're getting ready to send it down to Tony, who's with Coach Reggie down there on the field after the Stampede win. Hello, everyone, and I'm back at the end of the game. Tony Acevedo from the sideline. I have with me Coach Reggie. So, Coach, it seemed like a pretty fairly easy game, solid for your team. How do you feel securing this win? Uh, it feels good, you know what I mean? Like, we just want to get everybody in, you know what I'm saying, get everybody positive reps so that they're ready to go for the next game, you know what I mean? What players do you believe stood out in particular today? Oh, man, I would say uh, number 30, Eli. He played his head off, he played his butt off today. 5'4", uh, Marcos. He was flying around out there for us today. And, and pretty much everybody was out there flying around today. And that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted today, to see a bunch of kids out there flying around and making plays. What struggles were you facing when it came to the other team? Uh, what do you believe they did better compared to your team? Uh, I would say that first drive, and that was just getting used to me being off the field and coaching our defense. After that, they kind of got it together. I seen more leaders out there on the football field and made our drives a little bit easier, and uh, that was it, pretty much it, bro. Well, thank you for talking to us today, and I hope you have a great night. Good job to your team. Yes, sir, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. thank you, Tony. We appreciate the interview down there from Coach Reggie, a good positive energy from his group today, and they did an awesome job in the contest today, 46 to nothing, the final score. Not much left for us to say here in the broadcast booth for Sammy Rivera, Matt Venezia, the entire production staff here bringing you the NYFCA game of the week. We thank you for tuning in and we wish you all a good night. All right, now this is that point in the show. Welcome back to NYFCA TV. Jason, this is that point in the show where we talk about our player of the game. Yeah, you know, um, he absolutely delivered on both sides of the ball today. And again, uh, multiple uh, weeks in a row, we've, we've been able to, to honor the, uh, an athlete out here twice. So uh, we're going to go with Lennon Hauser, number 31. Hello everyone and welcome back to the final sideline report. I'm Tony Acevedo with official player of the game, Landon Hauser, which our spectators actually guessed earlier on today. So Landon, how does it feel to be the player of the game? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. Are you very excited? You feel you've earned this? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what do you enjoy about playing football? I just enjoy making good plays and just like being a leader. Well, you did very well for your team. Oh, yeah. How do you feel about how the game went? Um, it went good, yeah, but all our team made good plays. Absolutely. Well, that's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed. It's again Tony Acevedo reporting from the sideline. Thank you. Have a good night. Thousands of athletic teams depend on adrenaline fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Their goal is twofold. First, to equip athletic teams to meet those goals by raising more money in less time and providing the very best technology through their digital platform. Their job is to take the fundraising off the coach's plate and guide them through steps that are proven to get results every time. How easy? There are teams raising over $50,000 in just an hour. It starts with one call to Adrenaline, 602-999-1845 or AdrenalineFundraising.com.
Let, let's close this out. So thank you so much for tuning in to NYFCA TV. I'm Vince. This is Jason. Great week. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and we will see you soon. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right. It. Thousands of athletic teams depend on adrenaline fundraising to help reach their financial goals. Their goal is twofold. First, to equip athletic teams to meet those goals by raising more money and less time and providing the very best technology through their digital platform. Their job is to take the fundraising off the coach's plate and guide them through steps that are proven to get results every time. How easy? There are teams raising over $50,000 in just an hour. It starts with one call to Adrenaline, 602-999-1845 or AdrenalineFundraising.com.